Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to be showing you another way to use the Creative Grid Log Cabin Trim Tool Duo. Now when I first showed this to you, it was the traditional log cabin. Today will be the courthouse steps and the collection I'm using is Bess's Flower Garden. This is from Marcus Brothers. This is one of my favorite kind of more vintage Americana collections. We're going to dive right into it. When you get your log cabin trim tool duo ruler, inside you will of course have your information. So I want to show you what you can expect to have in that. Maybe you haven't seen that other video and you're, this is the first time you're being introduced to this ruler. So you have five different options of things to do with the ruler. So you're, they're showing them right here. In fact, I'll turn that around to the overhead camera. So in our very first video, that we did, we went ahead and did that simplest log cabin, that classic. Today we'll be going over the courthouse step. And so all of the information to do any of those five are included in here. Now the idea is basically we start with the center square and we add strips of varying lengths to each round and then we'll trim that up and we'll be going through each of those things. One thing that they've added as a supplement to the instructions that are included with the ruler is you can download either from the Creative Grid, Creative Grid website or from the Shabby Fabrics website, by the way, at the very bottom of the homepage, click on free download. You'll be looking for the courthouse step. We'll be providing a link to the sewing and trimming sequence, which I love this. What I love about this particular document is inside the instructions, when they talk about how long do you cut these strips that you'll be sewing to the center in, in all of these rounds, as we're calling them, and all they say is something longer than the previous length. Well, I like to be more specific, and what I love about the sewing and trimming sequence, which is a free download, is it tells us exactly what size to cut those strips to. So that's what I will be referring to and that's how those strips have been cut. So today, instead of looking at the log, traditional log cabin, we'll be looking at the courthouse steps. This is a 10 inch finished block and it all starts with a two and a half inch square here. So for the first and second light, which happens to be on the courthouse step, the same fabric on either side, we cut that to one and three quarter by two and a half. And then the first and second dark here were cut to one and three quarter by five. So that's how you use this guide. We'll sew those on, trim that round, and then you're on to round two, which would be saying these are now your first and second lights cut to one and three quarter by four and a half. And these are going to be your second round of uh, darks one and three quarter by seven. Let's work our way through that, but I wanted to explain to you how to read this. It's an invaluable thing to have. Okay, as always, make sure you've got a sharp blade in there. We're gonna be doing some precise cuts today. I've got my iron heating up to full hot. I'll just put my spinning mat off to the side for now. And you know, as you can imagine, you need to have that center dead on at two and a half and all of these cut precisely and it'll click together. It's just going to be amazing. And because we're sewing a piece to either side of the center, I can go ahead and sew one side on, flip it and go ahead and sew the other. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do with a quarter inch seam. At this point, I don't really feel like I have to pin. It's such a small uh, length. Let's just go ahead your quarter inch seam, even a little bit on the shy side, what we call a scant, is desirable. The piecing needs to be very accurate here for the block to come out as you would hope. So the pressing, super easy. Just keep pressing to the outside away from where you just sewed. So we'll warm up. I had these other rulers over here as I was cutting my, um, 
really cutting my strips out. I was just using some of my smaller Creative Grid rulers. So warm up that seam and let's press that good and even to the outside. Notice today I'm using the confetti, kind of that neutral gray. Um, you often see me sewing with that off-white, the KT-101. But today, knowing that really these were kind of in that nothing is white here, we have kind of an ecru color and darker gray seemed to be a good one. And the confetti neutral thread set has the, the kind of that off-white, the gray and the black. For piecing, that's all you're ever really going to need to have. Okay, so that part is done. And this is a really important check right here. So we, we know that if we started off with two and a half, this needs to measure two inches right now because everything is going to build off of that. So let's do a little check. Boy, let's hope that all, in all this talking here, I nailed that too. Oh, I feel lucky today. I am on the two. <laughs> so that lets us know that we're ready to move on now. And we'll go ahead sewing that upper portion. I can feel this fabric has sizing in it. And I should have mentioned that to you. You know, anytime I'm going to be doing precise piecing, I love to add sizing to that fabric, iron it very flat, and then go ahead and do that uh, cutting of those precise lengths. It just seems to make a difference in my piecing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that one over with me. Um, I suppose I could go ahead and pin those both just like that. In fact, I'm gonna do that. There's no reason to not pin them both at the same time. And we can just save ourselves a little bit of time here. And we'll be done once I sew those two sides on with the first, what we call round. And just like before, we'll warm up those seams, press to the outside, and we get to right away start using our trim tool. We do have a limited amount of kits of the Bess's Flower Garden. Um, that is a collection that's been out for a little while, so limited amounts of that remaining. So if this one is your look, grab that kit while they're available. I will keep, you know, try, as a designer, continuing to find collections that are really well suited um, for this particular style of a block. But yes, if that one speaks to you, go ahead and grab that while you can. I'm gonna grab my spinning mat I love to be able to put my block down one time and be able to square up. So let's go ahead. So I've, you can see, let me show what I've got here. I don't know the, the easiest way to show it to you. Maybe on the back side here. You can see standard round one, round two, three, and four. So there's a white box. Maybe if I show you here on this one, you can see that. See that white box? That's your first round. So we're just going to progress as we go here. We'll put that right around our center square. It fits very nicely. And then notice we have this other guidance, these lines, because you could be off and see how now I'm canted. So be lining up here, but I'm also checking my lines here as well. So I have lots of chances to line up and get this just as accurate as we can. And we'll get some of that out of the way. So we'll be able to square up two sides at the same time. Now I don't need to move my shape. And I know now those two sides were squared up, right? So I'm just going to 
continue to put the ruler down. I guess I should call it a tool, shouldn't I? Okay. So that is our first, what we call, round. Now I put a little picture out here, and the reason that I did that, and I encourage you to keep referring to the photo of the project, is it's now square. I could put on this next, uh, what we call log, on any side and it will fit, but it needs to be on the correct side to make our picture come out correctly. So I keep referring back to my photo, or for you, you'll have a photo, of course, in your kit if you're getting the kit. And I say, okay, now these will be going on the lights. And you can see I'll be building the lights out here, the blue up here, and the red down here. So pretty straightforward, but still it's always good to double check that you've set that down properly. Now we've got a couple of choices here. We can sew on this side and try to make sure those seams don't roll or we can sew on this side and then we don't have to worry about that rolling. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I, I feel more comfortable on this side because I can see if a seam is going to roll and I can also use some tools to help make sure that it does not roll. I'm going to pin this one as well and I'm going to grab a tool. You may have seen me use it. It's called the purple thing. Hopefully that's within reach. I'm gonna grab that because I know that to be safe, rather than putting my foot, my foot, my finger in there to hold that seam down, I, it's not safe to do that. I would rather put a, a tool that was specifically meant to do that in there and that's just gonna be a safer option. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew on this side and this side, but let me grab that purple thing first because I know I'm going to be needing that. So I've got my purple thing, just a couple dollar tool, but boy, it's so valuable to have that. So when that seam is coming, I just press it down and I don't need to worry about this one here because as the, it's not going to roll back. It's the seams that are going that way that want to roll as the presser foot approaches it. Okay, again, you already know we're going to press to the outside. Okay, let's see here. We're like this. Now let's see if we're going to fit. This is a test, right? This is a test of our accuracy of cutting. It's our accuracy of sewing. Those are going to be going on the top and the bottom just the same. So I'll go ahead and sew those on just like I just did, pinning them from this side so I can keep an eye on those seams. And then I want to come back. I want to trim that with you just one more time. I want you to see that. And then I will go and repeat row three and trim it, row four. Once I come back, I want you to, I will trim row four with you and you will see our finished courthouse step block. Okay, I'm gonna keep pinning. When I come back, we will trim this block up together. I'll have it pressed to the outside and we'll go on and go ahead and use our trim tool again in trim round two. So the round two is done. So now where it says round two, I will still put that around my center. You're always going to center that box around your center square, lining up all of the other guidance that's given to you, which is wonderful. Let's get our best chance there. 
getting that as accurate as we can. And just like before, we know those two sides. We'll turn that 180 degrees, pick up our ruler, turn it around, and now it's, we just go right back over that center square and use our guidance to line up those other sections. Okay, all right, so now we reorient our block back up to, here's our true north up here, our blue, and we're just gonna put on round three, which I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna trim that up. I'll do that all off camera. I'm gonna put on round four, and I wanna trim that one up with you because in that one, in round four, we, get to, we don't even have to move the ruler, and I wanna show you that. I'm excited to show you how, once you get to that final, uh, layer you get to trim around the entire ruler and never actually move anything at all. So okay, I will get busy. Let me go put those layers on when I come back. We'll be ready to trim up layer four and our block will be complete. Okay, I'll see you shortly. So I have my fourth layer on. This has not been trimmed and I wanted to show you something that happened during my piecing and in case this happens to you, you don't need to worry about it. So I wanted to point that out. You know, we've been working hard to make sure our blocks are exactly the same length and everything clicks together. Notice how in this corner right here, this, this log ended up a little bit short. That could be either I started too far that way, which I think I can see that happen. I started a little bit too far this way. I might have also trimmed that just a little bit short. But here's the great news. Because we're going to trim that up, you don't need to worry about that. So I, I didn't want to trim that away or re-sew that. I thought this is a great chance to speak to that if that's something that you experience as well. So let's go ahead now. Now we've done rounds one, two, three, I did off camera. Four has, three sides have a black line and one kind of has almost a white. It's kind of right in the middle of this. We will once again place that around our center square and we have all kinds of lines for guidance. And look down in this corner right here. You see that spot right there? Let me move my head out of the way. That's that spot where that didn't come together quite as well as I would have liked. But look what's gonna happen. It's gonna be trimmed off. So if you're off just a touch like that, no worries. You do need to make sure that center square is right on the money because everything's gonna be building on that. But if you're finding things aren't coming up, just maybe they're like an eighth of an inch off, no worries about that because we will be trimming things away and we're gonna do that right now. And as you can see, the ruler's exactly where um, it's going to sit throughout the trimming of all four sides. So we don't need to ever pick up our fabric. We don't need to pick up our tool. And that always increases the accuracy. I found that before I had a spinning mat, I was always picking up my fabric or my block and moving it and then trying to place it in the, you know, again, just so um, and put my ruler down just so. And what I ended up finding is my blocks weren't coming out nearly as accurately as when I took the time to use a spinning mat. So it's definitely worth something to consider investing in. So let's look at our block. That's the courthouse step block. How fun and easy that was. And look at that. It looks as if our, our piecing was perfect. I love the ability to trim up. So like I said, limited kits, but hey, you might have a stash of fabric at home, I bet you do, that you've been looking to find an inspiring tool and get going on a project that maybe you yourself have put together or designed. Grab the 10 inch log cabin trim tool duo. And as a reminder, I wanna encourage you to go ahead and download the sewing and trimming sequence because that lets you know exactly what length to cut each one of those pieces of fabric that will be going around your courthouse steps. So thanks again. Hey, let a friend know about this amazing new tool. Maybe they too might enjoy learning how to make the courthouse step blocks. So I'll see you on a future Shabby video.